Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And we are in Pensacola. And it's time for Bible study. I'm a little early, but I'm just in the mood to do it. So I thought I would. I came in here and I brushed up on a couple of chapters. And I'm only going to talk about two chapters tonight. So, let me tell you which ones they are. I'm using my computer. I'm going to talk about Genesis 40 and 41 tonight. And they're, um, they're about Joseph. Okay? I am in here in this bunk bed. And so, this was what pillow that I had. The emoji poop. I thought, well, how serious can I be doing Bible study with poop next to me? But that just goes to show how crazy I am with my poop. I used to always love when somebody would come down here, I would say, I got back down there and you left poop on the bed. And they would just be, like, what? And I, and I would start laughing because I was talking about this poop. Anyway, I'll move the poop so we can be a little more serious. And we will put our well there instead. We'll have a well of a time. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. I didn't say a bad word. I said well of a time. Plus, hell is not a bad word. It's a place. It's a real place. It's a real place we should talk about because this is Bible study. And we don't want anybody to go there. Okay. We're going to talk about how wonderful our God is tonight. Because we're going to talk about Genesis 40 and 41. Joseph, the poor little young man that had the coat of many colors. And his brother sold him into slavery was thrown into a dungeon. He was the Pharaoh's right-hand man until the stupid, stupid, if your grandkids are watching. I'm going to say it because that crazy man's wife tried to get him to do things he shouldn't be doing. Had him thrown in prison. Poor Joseph. Well, then the Pharaoh gets mad at his butler and his baker, they get thrown into the prison, and Joseph gets to be their servers, servant. He's their servant. So he's serving them, and he gets to serve them, and he's been serving them for about a year, every day, so I imagine he gets to know them. And he, notice, he notices one day that they're in a very blue mood. They seem so very sad, and Joseph, being the good guy that he is, says, What's wrong with you guys today? You seem really sad. And they say, Oh, we had a really bad dream, and nobody can seem to interpret it. And Joseph says, Well, interpretation of dreams is for the Lord. Tell me what you dreamed. So they told Joseph what they dreamed. One of them dreamed that there was a vine. And on the vine, there was a bunch of grapes. And they bloomed out, budded, grew. He squeezed the grapes into a cup. He fed the grape juice to the Pharaoh and he drank it. It was a good dream. The other guy, the baker, dreamed that there was bread in a basket and he had it on top of his head. And birds came. And they ate the bread out of the basket. Well, so Joseph told the guy about the grapes that it was a good dream. And that it meant that he was going to get to serve the Pharaoh again. And that the Pharaoh was going to give him his job back. So the baker got all excited because that was a good dream. And he says, well, tell me what my dream means. And he says, well, sorry. But your dream means that you're gonna, the Pharaoh's gonna take you and hang you, and you're gonna be hung, and the birds are gonna eat your flesh from the tree that you're hung on. Yuck, 
right? So it came to pass, and the baker, oh, and Joseph tells the butler, oh, and by the way, since I gave you the interpretation of your dream, please remember me when you go back into the house of the Pharaoh and give me a good word so that I'm not stuck in this dungeon. Well, of course, he don't tell the Pharaoh anything about Joseph. He gets his job back. The guy gets hung. Everything comes to pass, just like what Joseph says. Two years later, Pharaoh has a dream. Pharaoh dreams. He dreams that there's a fat, a fatted, I guess it's kind of like a calf or something. And he dreams about this fatted calf how big and nice and plump he was. And then he dreams that there's one that's really, really skinny. And the skinny one comes out and he eats the fat one. And he just devours it. And even after he devours the fat one, he's still so very skinny. It was just pitiful. Then he turns around and dreams that a corn sprouts up, and he dreams that the number seven's in there, too. I can't remember, like, seven. There was seven of them, or seven, uh, seven. Seven has something to do with it. With the corn, it was seven ears of corn. It was on one stalk. One stalk had seven ears of corn. Let me go back, and I'll look and tell you what about the fatted calf. Just give me a minute. It's hard to remember everything with my brain, especially. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat fleshed and well favored, and they fed in a meadow. So they came out of a river, seven. Of these fat kind. I'm imagining that's some type of earth-fed animal. Okay? And they fed in the meadow. Okay? And then um, another came out of them. Another came up after them, and they were poor and ill-favored. And they ate the well-favored. Okay? They ate up the first seven fat kind, and when they'd eaten them up, it could not be known that they had even eaten them. They were so skinny and so pitiful still, okay? Then there was seven ears of corn that was real fat and beautiful on one stalk, and then it said a... a wind blew. Seven ears came out uh, up on one stalk, full and good. And then it said, an east wind sprung up after them. And then thin ears devoured the seven good ears. Okay? So, he, the Pharaoh dreams this crazy dream. He don't know what it means. Nobody can figure it out. He tells the butler, the butler says, hey, Sorry, but the butler does say, he does say, um, I, I did recognize this. I do remember my faults this day. That's what he says, the butler. I do remember my faults this day. So the butler remembers that, that, um, Joseph asks him to please remember him. And then he remembers that he is at fault because he didn't remember him until now. So he does, re he does recall that, which is good. And he tells the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh calls Joseph in. Joseph interprets the dreams. He lets the Pharaoh know there's going to be a famine. Okay? 
And listen to this. This is just unbelievable. And only God, our God, could make something like this happen. That's how we know we serve a God. That and, and our God, only our God, can make things like this happen. I mean, things just don't happen by, by circumstance. They just don't. Um, because, listen to this. This is what he tells him that the dream means. And um, because then once he tells the Pharaoh what the dream means, the Pharaoh just turns around and, get, and hires him. Because uh, even the Pharaoh knew um, that there was no way that he could find such a person. So it says, um, it's just amazing. And Joseph says unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. Okay? God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that come up after them are seven years. And seven empty ears blasted. With the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled into Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now listen to this. He says, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet, and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and set him appoint officers over the land. Take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. Let them gather all the food of the good years that come, and lay the corn up under the hand of Pharaoh. Let them keep the food in the cities." The food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all of his servants. And the Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Now, this is a man that was in a dungeon, a dungeon, and now he is second to the Pharaoh. That's God, okay? He says, the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand he put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. And he put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him and bowed their knees. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Does that not give you cold chills? I think this is one of the most unbelievable stories in the Old Testament. It just sets me on fire for God. 
What a God, what a mighty God we serve. I mean, it just sets me on fire. If they don't set you on fire, don't nothing set you on fire. If you can't see that our God can take something so simple and do something with it, and he can do the same thing with whatever he wants to. And if you can't see that our God can take, and he does, every single day, he's in control of everything. Whether we think he is or not, he is, y'all. Even our president, no matter who the president is, that person is there in place regardless of what we think on purpose. Because if God didn't want them there, they wouldn't be there. Does it mean you like him? It, you don't have to like him. It don't matter. But he's in control. And he's in control of your life too. And you don't have to like it. But you know what? Uh, he's a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's an amazing God. And I love him. And I love what he did for Joseph. And see, when Joseph got sold, he probably cried like a baby and woe is me. But God had a plan. And God has plans. He has plans for you and he has plans for me. And he has plans for our kids and our grandkids. So don't get bent out of shape and think the world's going to end. And think that they're not going to amount to nothing. Because God can pick you up. And pick them kids up and he can use them and he can do anything so I just love it I just love this story but anyway he gives him a wife he gives him a life he lets him rule um, he has two boys at the end of this chapter um, he gives him a Zenith, the daughter of Potipharah. And then he has two little boys. Their names are... Now, the famine does start at the end of this chapter. So, he sees the seven plenteous years. It says that he got so much corn, he couldn't even count it all. It says that, I mean, he just lost count. He had so much food. But he stored it up. And just think about how God worked. And saved. Just think about how many lives God saved, put putting Joseph in place, knowing this famine was coming. Now I'm sure a lot of people died too, but just think about how many lives were saved just being able to store up this food for the people that did get to to eat some of this food, including Joseph's own family, which we will see when we talk about this the next time. But the, um, Joseph has, let's see, he has the first son he called Manasseh. He named his firstborn born Manasseh, for he said, uh, God hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. He named his second son Ephraim. For God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all the lands. And the famine was all over the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses, and he sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And we're going to end right there. But that is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, how God can do things. Um, how a man can go from being in the dungeon to having rings put on his fingers, being in a chariot, given a beautiful wife and being in control all because of God. What I like about it is the man who told Pharaoh, what I liked about it is he repents and says that he's wrong and he's done wrong 
when he tells the Pharaoh about Joseph. Repentance right there. The next thing I like about it is that the Pharaoh knew that it was God. And he said, this was a man of God. And he said, what manner of God is this? This man of God, how could I ever find a man of God like this to rule my people? You know, and then he says, you are going to be this man. You're going to be, nobody could be, you know, in charge of my people. Uh, the only thing that I have over you is my throne. That's it. In other words, there's nothing that I have better than you besides the fact that I have this throne. He knew that it was God. He knew that it was a big deal. God was important. I like that. So, uh, he could see the power of God. That's just a blessing, y'all. So, um, and it came to pass. So, um, that's God working in people's lives and God see, people seeing that he's real. And that's awesome. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's study. I hope it get, gets you um, excited. Makes you want to spread his word. Talk about how real he is. Um, I hope you have a blessed night. I hope you've had a great day. And I hope you have a great day tomorrow. Hope to see you tomorrow. And hope to be with you tomorrow. Um, I think it's raining here. I don't know if it's raining where you are, but it's kind of been wet lately, hadn't it, over here because of that uh, tropical storm we had kind of moving through. Y'all have a wonderful day, and let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for loving Joseph. We thank you for showing out in the life of Joseph and using him, um, Lord, to spread your word and to use his family and to show um, how real you were back then. I know that um, you used him and were able to bring his family to Egypt and feed them. And it was a blessing for his daddy to see that he was alive and that he was not dead like his brothers had told him. Um, and that is a beautiful story as well. And we look forward to reading that in the days to come. Um, we thank you for the word of God that you've given us to see. Um, how you have worked in the lives of all of these people in the past to show us Jesus. And to show us salvation. Um, be with us as we go throughout the day. Bless everyone who is here. Um, help them, Lord, in their daily lives with their health and their loved ones. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye. I love y'all. Thanks for watching. Real Southern Woman, where we love God. Bye.